If the category A in the general adjoint functor theorem has certain properties, it is possible to remove the solution set requirement. Making such a replacement of conditions gives us a special adjoint functor theorem. We recall the properties that we will require A to possess. One, a category A is well powered if and only if for each A object A, the collection of subobjects, which is defined to be the skeleton of monomorphisms in A with codomain A, is a set. Two, a set of A objects CI is a co-separating set provided for each parallel pair of A morphisms F and F prime, F is equal to F prime, if and only if for each A morphism G, which has domain A prime and codomain CI for some I, we have GF is equal to GF prime. We will be assuming the category A has products, and so we see that a set of objects CI is co-separating if and only if for each A object A, the following morphism alpha is a monomorphism, where alpha is defined by the universal mapping property of the product of CI powers, which are indexed by the set of amorphisms from A to CI, and such that by post-composing by the projection pi IG gives back G. The special adjoint functor theorem is as follows. Let A be a complete category, then G is a joint if and only if 1, G is continuous, and 2, A is well-powered and has a co-separating set. For the proof, we know that by the general joint functor theorem, it is enough to show that G satisfies the solution set criterion. So we let F from B to G A be a B over G object for an arbitrary B object B. Since C I is a co-separating set of A objects and A has products, by the previous note, the amorphism alpha, as defined in the blue triangle to the right below, is a monomorphism. We will now construct the following pullback. We first take the product of powers of CI indexed by the HOM sets in the category B from B to GCI for each I. Then for each amorphism G from A to CI, we have the projection on GGF from the top product defining a morphism to CI. So by the universal mapping property of the bottom product, there exists a unique factorization beta such that for each amorphism G from A to CI, beta followed by the projection on G gives the projection on GGF of the product above. Then we take the pullback of alpha and beta to obtain the following pullback square. We apply the functor g to this pullback. Since g is continuous, we have the resulting commuting square as a pullback with the products commuting with g. So now we are going to show that f has a factorization through g beta bar, and we do this by the universal mapping property of the pullback. So we define a morphism from B to the top product of CI powers such that by postcomposing with the projection on H gives us back H, much like how we defined alpha before. So by the universal mapping property of the top product, we get a unique green dotted factorization. Also note that G beta is a unique factorization such that G beta followed by G pi IG is G pi I G G F. And G alpha followed by G pi I G is GG since G preserves products. Now for there to be a unique factorization of F through G beta bar, we use the universal mapping property of the pullback. And so we must show that if we call this green dotted morphism delta, that G beta delta is equal to G alpha F. But by the universal mapping property of the product on the lower right, it is enough to show that for each amorphism G from A to CI, the post compositions of the top road and the bottom road by the projection G pi I G are equal. In other words, we want to show G pi I G G beta delta is equal to G pi I G G alpha F. On the left, since G pi I G G beta is G pi I G G F, we obtain G pi I G G F delta. But by the definition of delta, this is just GGF, which, as the diagram on the left already shows, is equal to G pi I G G alpha F. Therefore, we have equality, and by the universal mapping property of the pullback, there exists this unique morphism gamma such that the diagram commutes. Therefore, F factorizes through G beta bar. To finish the proof, we need to show that there exists just a set of these A objects, PF, constructed as the above pullback for each such morphism F with domain B. First, we see that since alpha is a monomorphism, alpha bar is a monomorphism, and so G alpha bar is also a monomorphism. And this is because monomorphisms commute with all limits and are preserved by continuous functors. 
So by choosing a representable monomorphism for each subobject of the above product, we have a solution set. And we know that it is a set because we have assumed that A is well powered. And therefore we have verified the solution set criterion and by the general joint functor theorem, we have the special joint functor theorem.